Zoe he left was the name of a stone. That stone was called the Serpent Stone. Adonijah was rebellious against the Lord. And in his rebellion, he called leaders of Israel together, called people together, so that he could be crowned king. And we see that he was crowning himself king in Edrogo by or of the serpent of stone he made him, animal sacrifices and a great feast. Adonijah means Yah is Lord. But then Adonijah was setting himself up as the Lord of Yah. Constantly, time and time again, we see the children of Israel were in trouble with the living God. And the primary reason, the main reason was idolatry. Over and over again. Can you imagine how this act of Adonijah incensed the living gods by making sacrifices on a serpent stone. The, the serpent, serpent who, who came, came into, into the, the garden, garden of Eden, Eden and whispered, and whispered to, to you, you shall be gone as gods. Adonijah was usurping authority and he dared to call the people together so that they could crown him king. Is this not what is happening amongst the Lord's people today? It is still the same today. The Lord's people in idolatry. Oh, you say, but that's pointing the finger. But then when we see what people are doing, when we see what the Lord's people are doing, and may God keep my heart, and may he keep your heart from doing the same thing. And we need to cry to God that he'll deliver us from this idolatry that's happening amongst his people. Well, you might say, what idolatry is happening? Well, there was always a mixture in Israel. Israel was told time and time again not to repeat the customs of the peoples that lived round about them, not to follow other gods. But there was a mixture. If you remember, there was another time when Jeroboam made a golden calf and he put it in Bethel. And basically he said, this is my feast of Pentecost. And he refused to go to Jerusalem to the true feast of Pentecost. And he said, come up here and worship. And he installed priests. So throughout the history of Israel, we see when Paul writing in the book of Corinthians said, they rose up to play in the wilderness. And the Lord was not pleased with them and overthrew them because of their idolatry and fornication. Now the mixture that we have today is coming in into many uh, charismatic ministries, even into the Pentecostal movement. And we see today that idolatry is being mingled with the things of God. We see that people now are beginning to gather around certain holy places. They believe that there are anointings around holy wells and holy places and past places of revival and they are venerating the very ground upon which these revivals took place. Buildings and churches and Celtic crosses are now being venerated. And people are wearing 
uh, medals around their necks. And I'm not just talking about a crucifix, uh, which is bad enough in itself, or uh, crosses. But I'm talking about people are wearing medallions, images, supposedly, of the Archangel Michael. Where is all this coming from? Well, let me suggest to you, coming from the very same source that has been coming from for many years, a mixture of Roman Catholic mysticism amongst the Lord's people. And now we see that people believe that there are anointings in old Celtic church buildings, that God is more present in an old stone building that goes back hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, that they believe is more present there than in their own hearts. When Jesus said quite simply, God is spirit. And they that worship him must, not ought to, but must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so we see that the people are usurping authority over the rule, over what God has said in his words, over the things that he said time and time again. When we go back to Exodus and we see the giving of the law, he said, Thou shalt not make any graven images in the likeness of male, nor female, nor bird. nor beast, nor any of the hosts of heaven, graven carved images, either graven and carved or images themselves. And now we see that people are believing that there is a special blessing by having a graven image on a silver medallion around their neck, or indeed icons in so-called holy church buildings. Brethren, how far is this removed from the simplicity of the New Testament? And that venerable old apostle, John, when he's writing his third letter and his first and second letters, to the dear children of God. At the very last chapter he says, Little children, keep yourself from idols. He said this as a warning, because just as it came to the children of Israel, it came also into the early church. He was warning. You see, they got off to a glorious start under the leadership of Moses. But then look what happened. And the early church got into a glorious start with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. But it doesn't take long before idolatry comes in again. And by the time we read the book of Revelation, he's warning the churches over and over again against these things and fornication and idolatry. And so this is the same today. We need to be free of all these things because scripture tells us the Lord is a jealous God. He said, I'm a jealous God. You can have no other gods beside me. And so when the serpent in the garden of Eden whispered, you shall be like God, he knew exactly what he was doing. And they became independent from God. And then a few chapters later, in the book of Genesis, we find Nimrod. And it also speaks, of course, in Genesis 6 about mighty men. And there were mighty men on the earth in those days, or giants, or gibor. And they considered themselves to be gods, mighty ones. And they took daughters and produced these mighty giants, which were not necessarily taller than any of the other people living on the earth. But they were simply tyrants. And they called themselves gods or mighty ones. And of course the first to set himself up 
to be worshipped by men and adored by men. Indeed, a warrior, a great celebrity, was Nimrod. And we see how that developed into the Babylonian worship of human beings as gods. This is a warning from the Spirit of God. Is the same thing happening today? Men trying to usurp authority over the living God set themselves up? Mixing things with idolatry? Sacrificing at the serpent stone, Zohileth? And you see, that same counterfeit spirit is still at work. Hath God said, oh, but it's fine. I can wear this wee medal around my neck. Why? Are we superstitious? Does it protect us or something like that? Oh, yeah, but if I go to that holy place, I'll get a blessing. Really? The scripture tells us not to set anything up as an idol. Even a building or a so-called church building becomes an idol when people believe they can only receive a blessing by being in that building. And Peter declares emphatically, Ye are lively stones. We are being built up into the temple of God on the earth. Paul says, don't ye know? Ye are a temple of the Holy Ghost, a temple of God on the earth. Why do we defile our bodies and our imaginations with these things? This is a call of the Spirit to come out from among them and be ye separate. And not to reason, ah, but it's only a picture on the wall. It's only just something engraved in a piece of wood. I don't really worship it. I don't really worship this thing that I have around my neck, this St. Christopher medal or this medallion of the Archangel Michael. I don't really worship it. Then at the back of your mind, is it because you think that you're going to be protected because there are prayers to the Archangel Michael to protect people? When all along it's the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt have no other gods. The angels do not desire to be invoked and worshipped. They serve the Creator God at his beck and call, not at my beck and call or anybody else's. Popes down the centuries claim to have the ability and the power to invoke angels and to command angels. People in the charismatic movement, even in the Pentecostal movement today, are doing the same. I release the angels, they say. I decree that the angels will do this and that and the other. We have no authority. Go to the word of God, the scriptures. Man has no authority to command the angels. They are the servants of the most high God. And least of all would Michael the archangel want some image of himself engraved on a medallion. And the artwork is so ugly in itself. It's an insult to these celestial beings to carve images of them on golden medallions or images of them in so-called holy church buildings. Thou shalt not worship any other God beside me, for I am a jealous God. And these are jealous gods. And he was not pleased with the children of Israel in the wilderness and wiped out a whole generation of people, not only because of unbelief, but because of idolatry in their hearts. He sent plagues amongst them. It behoves us today to take notice of what God commands us in the word. For these are not suggestions, beloved. These are commands. And today the serpent spirit is rampant, just as he was when he started his lies 
in the Garden of Eden, you shall be as gods. Little children, keep yourself in kindness. For this is a psychic spirit that is blending in and merging in with the Lord's people today. A deceptive spirit. But not deceptive if you read the words. If you read the scriptures, and not just read them, but they are there to be obeyed and practiced. Little children, keep yourself.